Hello, Tim Wilmot here, and welcome to my watercolour demo, a plain air recording. The location is Laycock, village of Laycock in Wiltshire, UK, a very pretty village. And this is a September day, um, quite the, the conditions are overcast, but the sun does come out later on um, so test fairly testing conditions from a watercolor point of view the changing light conditions and a fairly busy village as well as a popular tourist destination so you will see lots of people coming and going and I am um, interrupted in a nice way <laughs> through the uh, through my paintings so I have to you'll see some splits in the video recording so that's just where some some passers-by are talking to me and uh, you don't want to hear their their uh, narrative okay as i go through i will describe all the materials i'm using and uh things like brushes paints and so on so this is my location my setup and the scene in front of us quite a nice looking end of the building there nice timber work I'm perched outside the Cornerstone Cafe, as you can see. I'll uh, pop up in the left-hand corner a little thumbnail picture of my scene. There we go. And starting off, as always, with an outline drawing, I'm using a 3B pencil here. By the way, the, the video, the camera I'm using is very very cheap it's about 25 30 quid or so so it's not brilliant uh, visual qualities or the audio is not particularly brilliant um, so don't worry about the background noises you might hear right um, tops of the roofs getting some of those chimneys there Starting to think about the perspective going down to the end of the street to the distance and make a statement of this end window and of course the timber work above it. The paper I'm using is Saunders Waterford. 300 grams, uh, not the medium surface, and it's secured on a bit of Corex board with some masking tape. I don't pre-stretch the paper, just use it as is, it's not treated anyway. So let's get in some cars, or that car at the end. And the windscreen, lower part of the car, and now the end of the street and the there's a far building down the end there, which I think is another little cafe, and then there's a a restaurant here. Um, get in those two roofs. Left hand side. Now I'm going to introduce a couple of figures in the foreground, sort of emerging from the shadows. So this is the first one. Just roughly drawn in. Get the main outline. And a companion. Slightly different angle, not have them too synchronized together.
and the shadows, foreground shadows that they'll be coming from. There is that lower window of that building which I think I can't really because I put the two figures there in the foreground I can't put too much detail into that lower story window so I'll just, I'll just understate that not add too much detail um, in for it uh, let's pop in another vehicle behind the near nearby car and then another figure over on the right hand side you can see as I'm standing back there you can see more of my setup my tidy bag so let's start painting now add some water into my little container the set of brushes I've got here I will be using just really a few of them um, some large mop brushes there Raphael brushes starting off with this one it's a number six soft aqua brush from Raphael and now this is my little plastic travel palette just the three colors there um, well three colors and a neutral tint uh, top left corner is rose opera they're from Sennelier it's rose opera a sort of bluish red top right is a lemon yellow sort of medium to light yellow bottom right is scenarius blue and then I've got that neutral tint there we'll see those joggers go around again in a minute um, so starting with the sky you can see I've got four mixing wells there as well um, fairly rough treatment of the sky as I say it's an overcast day but does get a bit brighter towards the end so what I'm thinking about now when it's overcast I'm trying to think do I stick to an overcast day or do I introduce maybe a little bit of light I'm going to plump for a bit of sunlight in this where I am I'm sort of half half in the road half on the pavement so it's quite quite a busy spot but it is a it's a cul-de-sac as such behind me is the abbey and uh, the center of town is in front of us so with that sky I went over the rooftops this is just the first wash here um, so I'm just getting in the sort of base colors if you like of um, the majority of these buildings the sky won't be done again that's as it's going to be so things are a little bit easier to paint when you've just got a few limited colors but you've got longer mixing times of course you're trying to make all those different comb combinations of browns and greens and so on so we've got the now we're doing the base of this the side of the side of this building that's facing us nice warm brown color and also when you're continually mixing like this it does you do end up with different different hues and uh, it's not um, it's not all one continuous color there's there's some little variations that slip in there and as you can see there the that 
reddish colour from the roof is coming down. I've got a slight um, slope on the board here. Um, that's coming down. Adds, adds to that, that reddish colour. So the sun's coming out there. See my shadow. Very end of the street. Not sure at this stage how, how much detail to put in. So err on the side of caution. And I'm coming a bit cooler as I come down towards the bottom of the buildings and the road. few lines there on the far far right hand side just to help with the perspective and leading the eyes down the street. A lot of these people you see passing they've been dropped off by their coach um, round to the left and uh, they're walking up to the abbey. As I say, that's the abbey's behind me. Right, continue on with the wall. Painting over those figures because they're going to be darker than the middle ground. A bit cooler at the bottom. And everything's still quite damp. Um, it's quite a, it was quite a, a moist, dampish day. The sun does come out now and again, but overall, it's um, quite overcast. And so while this paper is still damp, I can keep going back up, back up into it, adding a bit more colour. It's got to be thicker though, otherwise you'll end up with um, some ballooning going on, cauliflowers. This will all dry a lot lighter than we see it here. bit of a shadow will probably go in a bit darker a more defined shadow on that left hand side of that roof that gable end with this Raphael mop brush it's you can get a quite good flat edge to it so it's really easy to do bit more detail work here with the same brush rather than having to reach for another brush or a smaller brush for this detail um, there's a few windows here So now I need things to dry off. I'm thinking about the next stage, which will be going with darker colours. You can see there when I was just testing it, still quite damp. Not right yet to go with another colour, particularly in the foreground. This brush that I've got there is I normally use for a bit of 
foliage it's a very ragged brush um, great for doing trees and random random foliage distant distant trees distant distant hedgerows Probably making the decision here not to go in with that just yet. Keep mixing. Probably mixing a greater length of time than the actual painting. little trial dab still a little bit too damp change brushes now go to a a smaller version of the first Raphael brush I had um, this is a size, I think it's a size 2 Raphael Soft Aqua. So while everything's still drying in the background, I'm going to get in some of those window details there. Because that was left unpainted, so I can, I can uh, go in with that. No problem. On my on this uh, travel easel here, I've got that handy yeah. little shelf, which is quite useful for laying brushes down. Quickly retrieve them when I want to. Right, so back to this foliage. Things should be a little bit dry now. You can see with this brush it's been splayed out and that's what helps to make the the nice shapes of trees so fairly light in the background this light green just filling in above the rooftops in the background down to the tops of the cars just check that roof again there we are there's the joggers returning Another fellow artist over there, hard at work. So it's getting a little bit dry now. Should be okay to now make a start on the rooftop. So bottom left hand corner, I try to mix in the darkest colors uh, because that's closest to the neutral tint. So we want a nice brown here, bit of red, bit of yellow, bit of blue, bit of neutral tint that there as well and then loosely painting over the roof there I've got the brush at almost a 45 degree angle and with these old buildings not be too precise with the ridge line of the rooftop 
helps give it that ancient look and leaving out little bits of the paper as well perhaps bits of roof tiles that are catching the light I'm holding the brush a little bit closer towards the tip now because I want a bit more of a precise control um, for these rooftops. Most of the time though I would hold it sort of halfway halfway up or at the very end, the very top, which does give you a bit more freedom and a looser feel to your painting. I find that anyway. Just bend my camera down again. I've got it strapped around my neck with a with a bit of wire coat hanger. It does look a bit odd, but it's the camera's so small people just don't notice it's there. So roof top and chimneys. Hold it again towards the tip for more of a precise control over the, the tops of those chimneys, which is slightly wider at the top than a little bit of a flue sticking out. slightly lighter colour at the very top as well and then it gets darker and then it's being blended in with the roof now but I've left a little gap on the left hand side of the chimney where the light is catching it Now proceeding on with the next house down the street. Chimneys are getting they're lower and smaller, narrower towards the distance. Keep mixing as I go along. Yeah, beautiful. <laughs> I'm looking at my <laughs> pencil drawing line to help guide me down towards the end of the street for the remaining rooftops and the, uh, the bottom of the roof. Now the side of these buildings that are in shade. Yep. So we'll start off with it's a similar tone to the roof, but we're going to get darker as we come down to the bottom. The 
as you can see here. And the very edge of the corner of the building there, again, like the ridge tops, it's not a straight line. A bit of imperfection in there, just to give that impression of the age of the buildings. The quirky line, so darker and cooler towards the bottom and the street level. Painting up against that nearby car. So the light's coming from the left. And that, sh that shadow being thrown from the corner of the building. Just hitting the car. Right down to the end of the street. And coming back towards us up the right hand side. to gable ends here basically two triangles one bigger than the other Down the far end, the, the far building does have a little bit of timber work on the front, but I don't want to put in too much detail. And there's some timber work on the uh, the right-hand buildings there, on top of the white paintwork. was going to leave that that triangle a bit there as a rooftop catching the light but I think it was a bit too light compared to the rest of it so I've just painted that in and then rough up the side of that building not make it too neat and tidy now for some windscreens more details. Bump? No. Now the light. The right hand the side of the, the light changing. Cars are in shade. Raphael. Ah, right. Okay. Nearby. Synthetic and uh, car windscreen. Not too expensive. Very very soft though. Um, incredibly soft. bumpers and the right hand side of that car in the shade for shadow bit thicker now for the shadow below the car get in some definition to the Bottom of the chassis, bottom of the car. The 
we've got this funny angle of the sunlight coming in so there's a bit of light going below the car just a tiny bit and then more of the shadow continuing on over to the right hand side maybe up the buildings as well and there we are so just painting around a car helps define that car. So now a nice shadow up the left hand side at this gable end all in one there we go and finish it off at the top and see what I mean about the nice straight edge you get with a good quality mop brush this is this is um the hairs on this one are synthetic not natural so it's quite easy to i tell you right get in some we, we nice angles as well with that brush as well as straight lines straight edges you made it nice little angles around the window around the window frames so i just did a little bit to that bottom window but can't put in too much detail there because it'll conflict with the two figures in the foreground so foreground shadow now do the shadow first and then the figures coming into them afterwards so the figures were sort of, their legs will melt into the shadow. Bit of a detail to that pavement. And then the shadows as they go over to the right, they're going to be fainter, get, getting weaker over to the right. Now figures. Figure number one. And they're going to be walking away from us so that they're we can't really see their faces they're going to be all pretty much one color and being foreground i don't want too much detail on them just something that helps the composition a balance to the car which is sort of right of center um, a balance on the left hand side here so paint in the body and legs drag down into the shadows which are still wet of course and then companion figure number two starting with the head this one's at a slightly different angle leaning into towards the first figure you are got to work quite quickly to ensure that when i come to the legs the shadow the the, the uh the foreground shadow is still wet and um, things are going to melt 
together. So shoulders, thinking here this person might be dog walking with lots of dogs walking around or maybe pulling a, some kind of a case or something um, just giving the hint of some sort of movement and um, make it different from that, that first figure Right, reaching for a smaller synthetic brush here with a good point and we'll get in the we'll get in some details now that paint is that I'm painting on now is dry so there's going to be no bleeding as such. And I've got a very thick um, mixture of paint on the synthetic brush. Dark shadow on the right hand side because of course the lights coming from the left Again, not too much, not too much detail to that end building. Just a few spots and lines and marks on the right hand side. Now that far figure starting with the face. So this figure is just slightly in the light. <laughs> This brush has got a very good point, so it's quite nice for doing, putting little dots here and there, and very faint lines. Smaller detail work. Right, this third figure on the right hand side is going to have a bluish jacket. Grab a bit more water. Tail lights as red as I can. I don't have a bright red in this palette, so I have to do my best and compromise with what I've got. Give a bit more definition to the car. Tops again with this, keeping with this small brush, fairly dry paint. Yeah. 
not a not a continuous line a bit of lost and found and again with some vertical lines drains divisions between buildings going down towards the bottom So this building, the gable end here, needs to be completed with those that timber work as well. of a shadow there going across the other side and shadow on the chimney would normally do that with a with a mop brush to perhaps get a a nicer finish to it but as I had that brush at the time stuck with it different So this timber work now, fairly dry brush, not too much water. The lines need to be a bit darker in the shade Make it look easy. than maybe Sometimes. <laughs> lighter over to the right hand side. And some verticals. Those funny little ones above the window, and then complete the ones at the top. See a little bit darker in the shade there. Well, I've got this dark paint, we can add a bit more details to the window, drain pipe coming down. Where those little bits of paper left unpainted, I've made those into some object on the wall and just dragged a shadow down. Just utilize those. Sometimes when you, if you've left out little marks like that, just leave it a while, go back to it, consider what, what can you make out of it. Maybe a figure, maybe some shoulders, a um, bit of street furniture, something protruding from a wall. Dabbing around now. Getting fairly close to the end. Some windows.
maybe some lines of mortar there defining some of the brickwork bottom of the street some tire marks, tire marks on the road which again just helps lead the eye lead the eye down the street perhaps some aerials on the rooftops a bit more into the having the lower part of the figures melting more into the shadow from the, the houses in that car Some of the building with dry brush strokes. So there we are. Completed. So if I can just uh, pop this up here. Um, slightly truer colors here. My camera being quite a low cost camera you can see that most people passing a pit most of the walkers by seem to be wearing purple um, jumpsuits or something everyone was dressed in purple clothes there's a bit of a funny tinge to the colors um, but this is a truer reflection of what what i've done so a plain air painting in laycock in september um, got there, it was cloudy or overcast. I plumped for a bit of sunshine. As it happened, the sun did come out. And changing a few minor details, thinking about where the figures can be to help with the balance of the composition. So we've got those two foreground figures there, um, balancing the, the car and the, the right-hand figure. Shadows going from one side to the other bit of light and shade lights and darks and darks the darkest areas close to the lightest areas which is sometimes quite a nice effect in watercolor to have those those uh, two tonal differences right up against each other the light the very lightest right up against the very darkest Probably not in dead center picture, but off to one side. So there we are. Hope you enjoyed watching that demo. Um, apologies for the, again, for the low, fairly low quality of the video. But as I say, it is a cheap camera. Um, when I can afford it, I might invest in a slightly better camera uh, for this outdoor work, but it suffices. And hopefully we got over the, the main gist of what I was doing. Now, if you do want any more information about me or if you'd like an online demo tuition just for you, um, I can organize that with you at a time to suit you wherever you are in the world. Um, just contact me by email. I can give you full details or you can see more information up on my website, Tim wilmot.com t-i-m-w-i-l-m-o-t.com uh, get more information on my latest works up and coming workshops and more information on any one-to-one -one tuition as well uh, so thanks for watching 
and catch up with you next time. Bye-bye.